Hi, this is Stephanie Rogers. I am the Executive and Artistic Director of the Anderson Center and happy to be bringing you another studio visit conversation with one of our local artists here in Red Wing. Today I'm talking with Chap Aiken, a local photographer, um, and he's joining us from his studio here in Red Wing. Chap, could you introduce yourself to our audiences and tell them about your main medium and how long you've been working as an artist? I'm a photographer, as you mentioned, and um, I, of course, have been photographing for many years. Um, I started uh, in the field of photography when I was a young kid around uh, seventh grade. And uh, the reason I was attracted to photography was my father was a professional photographer. And when I was uh, about 10 years old, um, around Christmas time, when business was really good at the studio, I would be in the dark room handling prints, washing them, uh, moving the uh, development, or not the development tray, but agitating the other trays. My dad always handled the development. And I was like his assistant. So I got a very early start in enjoying photography. Uh, my dad was, uh, had been in World War II and came home with a German 35 millimeter camera. And I have it here. I was going to show it to you. Here it is. This uh, little camera, uh, it's a German camera. It has the name on it. On the back says Weltini. And it's got a Schneider lens, um, approximately a 50 millimeter lens, uh, F28. And it was my first foray into photography. And my dad would give me a roll of film and uh, out I'd go. Now, um, as you know, or maybe people don't know, I'm, I'm also a pilot. I, uh, that's how I made my living. And uh, the first things I photographed were my model airplanes. Uh, I had a model of a B-58 Hustler, which, which is a four engine gas guzzling uh, jet that um, I put on my sidewalk outside the front of the house. So it made, I made it look like it was taking off. I also enjoy the way that photography can play with scale and distance when you start to juxtapose elements. So I can, I can picture that model airplane becoming a, a real jet, both in your imagination and in, in your photographs of it. Um, and I, I also really relate to that experience of watching the photographs kind of bloom in the dark room. It's really magical. And, and part of me is sad that people aren't getting that experience as much now that most photography is digital. Um, so you've got a beautiful aerial photograph behind you. Was there a connection between your work as a pilot and were you taking photographs from the plane? Um, could you yes. talk a little bit about that? Yes. And in fact, um, that particular image, and I will just do this briefly, um, was taken from the cockpit of uh, Red Wing Shoe Company's airplane. We were flying from Portland, or excuse me, Seattle to uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, most of the people on the aircraft had never been over uh, Mount St. Helens before. So we flew around St. Helens. We circled it two or three times, and we were at about 15,000 feet. And I photographed that um, image of, and that was in 2004. Um, I also flew over Mount St. Helens very shortly after it erupted. It had erupted in 1980, I believe. And uh, it was the most uh, amazing landscape I have ever seen. As you flew around Mount St. Helens, everything was brown, ash, and all the trees were laying splayed out like this, and they looked like pickup sticks, um, as far as you could see. Um, and a lot of that, of course, has come back, but uh, it was, uh, uh, and so I, I, I have dabbled in uh, aerial photography, not from the company airplane so much. In this case, I was riding in the right seat uh, while my, um, co-captain was uh, flying from the left seat. So we had an opportunity to uh, photograph it and yet stay safe as we were flying uh, with the air, through the airspace. 
so you had you had a whole other career as a pilot and and we're doing photography i'm assuming a little bit more as a hobby or a, a serious hobby during that time is there a point in your career as a professional photographer which you are now that you felt like you had really transitioned to making it as an artist well yes um i uh, uh I, i've been i've been living in red wing with my wife and family for 40 four years now. And <clears throat> the first house we bought, um, I put a dark room in and I started making uh, black and white prints, of course. And uh, black and white printing was um, something that you could easily do in your own home dark room. Color processing and development was uh, much more problematic in a home setting. Uh, so I started uh, really 44 years ago, uh, working on the craft. And um, it was, oh, I, I'm not exactly certain when it occurred, but it would have been um, in the late 70s, early 80s, I participated in one of Red Wing Arts Festivals. Back then they held it at the, um, uh, the Votech, they called it at that time, the uh, Technical College. And uh, Larry Veter was running it, and he put me in one of the hallways. I had a four by eight sheet of pegboard folded in half on the floor, and I had a photograph of a thunderstorm over Red Wing, and I sold it. And I was like, hey, this is pretty good. Um, and again, it was, it, it was a hobby for me at that time. And, uh, but I really began to feel like I had an opportunity to um, improve myself and do better, and and I worked at it. And I feel like Red Wing has been the, the beneficiary of some of that work. You've taken such beautiful, incredible photos of this community and our geography, and, and the Anderson Center has certainly benefited from your photography skills. So we really appreciate that and the work that you do in this community. Are there recurring themes or images in your work or particular subject matters that you're drawn to? Yes, um, uh, trees in particular. Uh, I love trees, and I also uh, love trees in the wintertime. Um, I, uh, I used to go out um, as often as I could and photograph the, the landscape. And I was doing it in black and white because, uh, of course, that's the type of work I could do in my own darkroom. Um, I was shooting color in those days, color film and color slides, but that was mostly reserved for vacations and family-oriented um, pictures. But uh, trees and also railroads. Uh, I'm a. If I didn't, if I didn't have a dark room and a photography, I'd have a model railroad layout. Um, and I still have all the train cars in boxes. And as soon as I uh, get rid of all my photographic dark room stuff, which I don't think I will, I'd build a layout. Uh, so trains and um, trees. Uh, certainly the landscape, but I also really enjoy uh, photographing people, and I've done a lot more of that lately. That's a great segue into my next question, which is, what are you working on now, or what are, what's up next? Well, um, I, I found myself um, doing a lot more work with nonprofits. I'm using my skills. Um, I'm not doing this to get paid. I'm doing this because I enjoy it. So, for example, uh, the Sheldon Theater um, has productions uh, um, uh, during the year, and I have photographed many of those productions, and they have used those materials for uh, advertising, uh, promotion of the, uh, the, the theater, promotion of Friends of the uh, Auditorium, or Friends of the Sheldon, and uh, I've done that with Red Wing Arts, in helping to promote their activities through, uh, I've been making short videos of the Concerts in the Park series so that I can uh, share those with um, the audience through the Red Wing Arts Facebook page so that we can um, ensure that uh, the people in the 
community know what we're up to and, and what we're doing. And also, I have had the uh, good fortune of working with uh, you and uh, Robert out at the Anderson Center in uh, promoting the Anderson Center. I documented the uh, reconstruction of the barn. Um, I took a series of photographs of all the uh, sculptures. Um, I did those in black and white um, out in the sculpture garden. And also, um, through my uh, relationship with Robert, um, I had the opportunity of being an artist in residence in Salzburg and also the uh, exchange artist with the sister city of Chuzoa, Chuzhou in uh, China. Um, I did that in 2018 and I was in Salzburg in 2015. Um, it's been a great collaboration between myself and um, Robert and the Anderson Center. And, and now I'm hoping I'm working with you too. Absolutely. Um, you were, we did work together when we sent you to Shuzhou. Um, it's been almost two years ago now and, and you were by all accounts a great ambassador for the Anderson Center and the city of Red Wing and those exchange programs have been an important part of our efforts to, um, sometimes I like to talk about the Anderson Center as being rooted in Red Wing, but reaching across the world. And those international exchange programs are core to our mission and to our residency program. And the photos that you took of the sculpture garden, um, some of them are on view at the St. James right now in a pop-up exhibition that we hope lots of people, lots more people get to see as the restaurants and the hotel um, fully reopen in the coming months. Great. Yeah, I, uh, I also, as you know, I had an opportunity to uh, work with uh, Robert in, we uh, collaborated on a book um, about his poetry and my photographs. And uh, so when we would discuss this, um, I said to Robert, you know, Robert, uh, as a rule, photo picture books really don't sell that well. And he said to me, you think poetry does? And we, so we did come up with a book. I have a, a copy of it here, this book. Um, and uh, it was really a lot of fun to work with Robert on this. Um, really uh, uh, enjoyed it. And I was so glad he asked me to um, have some photographs to accompany his artwork, his poetry, excuse me. Poetry is artwork. <laughs> this Place Called Home is a beautiful book and, um, very few towns of Red Wing size would have um, professionals of your caliber and Robert's caliber to contribute the memories and the, the ode to places that you've both known so well. So it's, it's a beautiful book and um, I hope it's sold. I hope the combination of your efforts has reached a larger audience and I think that, that it has. Um, so we also have copies of that at the Anderson Center that people can pick up when our galleries are open to the public again. Yeah, let's hope that soon. Yeah. Has the coronavirus pandemic changed your work or the way that you're working at all? Um, well, not really, other than the fact that it's, um, it's given me the opportunity to, to do things that I have put off. Uh, as you know, um, with digital um, photography and digital management of files, um, you have to be careful, you have to be uh, thorough, and you have, to, um, you have to manage those assets in a way that, is, that was different from the analog film days. I have uh, three ring binders filled of negatives that have been in sleeves, and I can still reach to one of those books and find a negative almost faster than I can find one of my digital files. Um, because with digital um, photography has come the ability to produce far more files than you ever did in the film days. Uh, so I've taken advantage of this time uh, to uh, really um, edit my work down. Uh, sometimes what happens is you go out and you shoot. So for example, I've been photographing the bridge reconstruction project over the last couple of years. And there are a lot of images that just simply aren't uh, necessary for me to keep. They're 
they're duplicates. And so I've been going through and editing and getting rid of that um, duplication um, and kind of doing a better job of uh, revisiting my files and uh, and sometimes discovering files that I hadn't seen in a while and um, have an opportunity to give them new life. So I've been out photographing a little bit, but not as much as I would like. Tell me about your inspirations. Well, one of the people that's inspired me is my son. Um, he has uh, taken um, his love of family and adventure and recorded it. Um, and every year he produces this hour long, maybe a little bit longer um, video presentation set to music with images and video that he has done um, the past year. So we're, we're watching that family grow up and we all look forward to these, what we call them slideshows. Just like the old days when you had, do you remember slideshows? I do. A, and you took the slide like this, you put it in the viewer, you put it up here, and the person looking at it would go, oh, this is beautiful. And my sister next to me would say, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, but with this, this way of sharing, I've, I've started to realize the importance of video in telling a story. And, uh, I, and I want to do more of that. And he is really, he does a fantastic job. I'm, uh, I'm impressed. I wonder so, where he gets it from. <laughs> well, he had to watch a lot of my slideshows when he was growing up. That's a great story. Thank you for sharing it. We talked a little bit about some of your favorite subject matter. Um, are there, beyond trees and railroads and, and some of those things, are there other reliable sources of inspiration for you? You know, yes. Uh, so for me, I have a pretty good collection of photographic books. Um, photographers that I have admired. Uh, one of them is by a fellow by the name of Mike McKenna, who still practices uh, black and white photography with film. And um, of course, Ansel Adams was one of my uh, uh, favorites. Um, I admired his work as did so many other photographers. And in some ways I tried to um, uh, emulate that in my approach, uh, shooting with uh, red filters, creating dark skies, uh, dramatic landscapes. And, uh, and then there were um, other photographers, Sam Abel, uh, John Sexton. I took a darkroom course from John Sexton. John Sexton was and is a um, large format film photographer who uh, was Ansel Adams' assistant. And back in about 1995, I felt that I could take my darkroom skills to the next level. And so I took a course from uh, John Sexton, uh, a darkroom course, a printing course, out in his studio in uh, Carmel, uh, California. And it was really, really um, a great experience. Um, I really uh, learned a lot. Um, I came home, I bought a new enlarger. And uh, in fact, Stephanie, I think I showed that enlarger to you. I had it for about, I still have it, but I used it for about six years and then digital hit. And um, I actually made my, probably my last dark room print in about 2005. Uh, but those uh, folks, um, Oh, another uh, inspiration that I, I, I meant to mention this earlier is uh, going to museums, galleries, uh, looking at artwork that has been online, um, but also the artwork that you've exhibited out at the Anderson Center. Uh, you've had, um, over the years, there have been a number of photographers that have shown their work there. And, uh, and so that's been an inspiration for me. He, he, there was another thing that helped me a lot, and that was the public library here in Red Wing. When I was, I was teaching myself photography, basically, and 
they had a great collection of, uh, of material, books that um, talked about the process of how to um, properly develop, expose, and print um, photography. Uh, so there were there were just uh, lots of opportunities for for inspiration. That's great, and I, I feel like that rolls into my next question, which is, what advice would you give to an aspiring artist? Certainly, uh, to uh, practice. Um, you, you get out as much as you can, especially as a photographer, um, to uh, make the camera not uh, and make it just an extension of you and not something that you've got to pick up and try to figure out every time. And that, by the way, is one of the drawbacks of digital photography. As it, it used to be that I could shoot with a um, four by five camera, a two and a quarter Hasselblad, a 35 millimeter Nikon or a Canon. And I didn't have to know anything about how to operate the camera. I knew how to press the button. I knew how to set the aperture a shutter speed, um, and we didn't have to learn how to use the camera uh, in a way of taking a picture. We, we just simply had to practice our own skills in composition, understanding light, and, uh, and that, of course, is the, uh, one of the challenges of people who get into digital photography today is, first of all, get through all the menus. Some of these cameras have so many choices that um, kind of drives you nuts. Um, it does me. <laughs> I, uh, um, you know, I, I was, I bought my first new camera in 1970. Um, I was in Japan. I was overseas during the Vietnam War, and um, it was a Nikromat. Uh, I still have the camera, uh, and it was a, uh, it was my uh, first uh, new camera that uh, gave me um, the opportunity to. Uh, uh, see uh, an entirely different culture, and uh, I came home with a lot of uh, great pictures, and I was off and running on my photo adventure. I also find my digital camera, which I, it's a great tool, and I enjoy using it, but it is certainly less intuitive than my 35 millimeter Nikon that I shot with for many years, so yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with that. Do you have long-term artistic goals or things you're still working towards that you don't feel you've achieved yet? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, uh, one of the things I'm doing, you asked me what am I doing during the coronavirus uh, um, uh, shelter in place. I've decided to, I, I use a, a program called Lightroom and, uh, and Photoshop. Both of those products are by, from Adobe and I use both of them but I've never used the full potential of Photoshop in my work. Um, and I am going to um, make a concerted effort to do that. I, uh, um, I you know, I've taken um, some online courses, but I, uh, and I feel I'm very good in, um, in what I do, but there is so much more I can learn and, uh, and get better at. So it's kind of a lifelong thing. You just, um, you find out that um, there are um, there are things that you can do to really improve an image, um, and I, you know, a lot of people say, well, uh, Photoshop is is um, is is not real. Um, it's and it and I used to say the same thing when I first started with digital. I said, no, I don't use Photoshop. These are pictures that I've taken, and and they're um, they're fine just the way they are. Well, guess what? That's not true at all. You do need to use Photoshop, especially if you shoot in what we call camera raw, where you've got the, you basically have uh, a negative and you have to interpret it. It has all the information and there's a hundred different ways of interpreting it. And that's, and I want to be able to um, have a stronger skill set in that interpretation. And then, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to agree and say, absolutely. I think people who don't use Photoshop on a regular basis or have a narrow understanding of what that software can do, see it as um, really replacing or changing elements of the photo, but so much of even the menus and the way things are set up, including 
the names of tools such as dodge and burn or masking are coming straight out of darkroom photography skill set, which is what Photoshop was built to try to emulate is the kinds of changes to a photo in terms of highlighting something through a manipulation of just basic light or dark values that photographers have always been doing. So that we could talk all day about um, the idea of truth or um, manipulation in photography, but um, I think this is maybe a, a really good overview for a lay audience and um, it's been great talking to you. Is there anything else that you would want audiences at home to know about your work and, um, and your experience as an artist? One of my goals um, uh, at this point is to uh, create a portfolio of my work that I can give to my family members. Um, they would not be prints that were um, large prints. I, I might make those prints at eight by 10 in size or approximately that size or 11 by 14. Something that they could put in a, a little portfolio and have um, their real prints. They're not um, behind glass. Um, I, I, don't real, I don't know how many people realize how beautiful a photographic print can be when it's not under glass. Um, unfortunately, we most often have to uh, place it under glass because of the, um, the environment. But uh, a beautiful photographic print is fun to uh, touch and, and look at. Um, so that's one thing that I really uh, am uh, gonna try to focus on is, uh, is getting that done and uh, continue to make photographs, um, continue to find ways to uh, contribute to the community. I got, um, I'm very fortunate to have worked for Red Wing Shoe Company and had the opportunity to um, take pictures. Um, it's, it, I, 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 I'm very lucky. And we're lucky to have you as part of the community. If people watching this want to find out more about their work, could you share your website and Instagram and any other places that audiences could find you or follow you online? I have a website. It's uh, chapakenphotography.com or chapakin.com. And Aiken is spelled A-C-H-E-N. Uh, they also have been um, I've been working on uh, something new that I um, I created a, a Spark page. I don't know if you're familiar with that. You are, I think. And uh, so I shared uh, some images that I took on the Oregon coast uh, back in February, and um, it kind of tells a story. Uh, there's no music. There's no none of that. But it's a way of um, sharing your images online uh, without. Uh, in, as opposed to something in print. Um, so I'm gonna to try to do more of that and I'll probably put that on my Facebook page. And uh, I do have an Instagram account so people can uh, follow me there. Um, I'm uh, Currently I'm uh, working with the Lake Pepin Legacy Alliance and we'll be sharing photographs on their website for, um, uh, so that we can uh, generate um, uh, more interest in uh, saving Lake Pepin from um, the, all the sediment that is flowing into the, to the lake. And um, I hope to be back uh, out at the Red Wing Arts, having people come down, see our shows and exhibits, and uh, coming back out to the Anderson Center and looking at your new exhibits. Thanks so much. Yeah, there are some good ones coming up and you know me, I, there's photography in them. Great, I look forward to it. Thanks so much, Chap. This is Stephanie Rogers from the Anderson Center and this video is part of the artistic response team of Red Wing, a collaboration between the Anderson Center, Art Reach, Red Wing Arts, Sheldon Theater, and Universal Music Center. Thanks.